Louis Tickner, a despicable former Metropolitan Police Constable, faced the first days of his misconduct hearing last week after he is alleged to have told a female colleague, if you're asleep, you can't say no. Tickner was a serving police constable at the time of the incident on February the 14th, 2021. Clearly a hell of a romantic guy. The woman who's for some reason, height was mentioned in the reports I've seen, although I don't see what a height has to do with anything. I mean, she was a copper and should have been hired because she could deal with incidents involving men. Told the misconduct hearing that Tickner grabbed her wrists to prevent her from leaving his flat in South London. He is said to have kissed her and put his hand on her throat and implied that he would rape her. The hearing heard that she went over to his flat in Tooting whilst they were both off duty to watch a film. Alan Jenkins, representing the Metropolitan Police, said at one point in the evening she indicated she wanted to leave, but former PC Tickner prevented her from doing so. He suggested that he would engage in sexual activity without her consent. He used physical force to grab her wrist to prevent her from leaving. Jenkins said his actions caused Ms A to be fearful. The female colleague, being referred to as Ms A, gave evidence from behind a screen telling the court that he had called me a couple of days before and said that he had broken up with his girlfriend. Then on the 14th, he had, I don't remember if he called or texted me, basically implied to me that he was very drunk and very sad and that he was possibly going to hurt himself. And so I went there because he asked me to and because I thought of us as friends and I didn't want him to hurt himself. Although the hearing heard how the pair were not close friends as Ms A had only known Tickner for a year and a half and at that point they had never seen each other socially. Ms A said at some point Louis kissed me. That was consensual, I didn't mind that but then he almost immediately pushed me away. So I sort of sat upright, I wasn't going to do anything. And then he pulled me back and then he kissed me again and then he pushed me away again and then he continued. At times he would push me away, I would sit upright, I would think okay he's clearly uncomfortable. He would then pull me back again and it started to get quite repetitive and uncomfortable for me. At one point I had said that it was quite late and that I should probably think about going home and he said I could stay at his house. I thought about it and I agreed because I'm stupid. I mean because I didn't really want to pay an Uber price to get home. I said to him if I was staying that nothing like sexual would happen and he, I don't remember the exact words that he used, but he said used words to the effect of if you're asleep you can't say no. I made that very clear by saying to him that I wasn't going to have sex with him. He said that if I was asleep, I couldn't say no. She told the court that his response made her feel scared. She continued, at one point, I think he kissed me and he put his hand on my throat and I pulled his hand away and told him not to do that. And he started screaming and shouting at me to not touch him like that, to not pull his hand away like that. Ms A said she had a panic attack because of the shouting. Yes, yes, this is the calibre of police women we have out there, supposedly there to protect us from the baddies. She claimed that she thought to herself that he was quite drunk and at some point he would fall asleep, so she decided to wait until he was asleep before making good her escape. The panel heard that the pair had three phone conversations in the next day in which she told him what had happened. Tickner allegedly said that if she told anyone, it would ruin his career. The former officer denies preventing Ms A from leaving his home, suggesting he would engage in sexual activity without her consent and using physical force against her. Of course, we can't simply believe the woman as there are one or two cases where women have been known to tell a porcupine or two. But then again, we also know what the Metropolitan Police mentality is when it comes to their sexual needs. I do think, however, this again highlights the kind of people we have working for police in a role that sees them faced with shouting people and uncooperative people all day long. But yet a single incident with a colleague sends the so-called victims into an alleged PTSD or anxiety meltdown. And the government and police forces want more of this kind of person in our police forces for the sake of diversity. I wish they would simply concentrate on the job and those willing and able to do the job without giving a toss what colour their skin is, what they identify as, whether they're a giver or a taker, whether they're a man or a woman. I think that policing will improve dramatically if they started to get over those factors and simply go back to basics.